to Behind the Spotlight. I'm Crystal Lampett, and this show is really all about getting to know some of your favorite musicians. Tonight, I have the pleasure of speaking with Jacob and Danielle, also known as the Blackbird Review. We have a husband and wife duo here tonight. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for Glad having me. Thank here. you so much for being here. Uh, mm -hmm. We're going to kick this off with a song. Tell us what you're about to perform. This is one of our newest songs. It is right. called Golden Years. Wonderful. Golden Years, the Blackbird Review. All right, welcome Jacob and Danielle. That was Golden Years. It was. Tell us yeah. about that song a little bit more. Expand on it. Well, it's a new song. Mm -hmm. I wrote most of it, though we did a little bit of co-writing with a friend of ours who's in a band called The Snow Globes. Nice. Um, her name's Lindsay Jones-Pryor. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that was... And it's the Golden Years. The golden, the years. golden Years. I love the sound. It's so... And I really... I have to point out the way you guys play your percussion. So cool. I haven't seen that before, and I don't know if I'm just out of the loop or what, but I love no, that it's, no. it's two of you, but you basically have a full band. Yeah. Right. We had to do it, I think, out of necessity, actually, <laughs> because we wanted to be able to tour, and, you know, the band we were playing with, they all had full-time jobs, so well, it's really hard to... And you did start off as a six-piece right. or six-person band, yeah. correct? Yes. So it's now whittled down, whittled down to just the two of you. Right. right. Um, what happened there? Essentially, we got tired of paying the other members, so <laughs> we murdered them one by one <laughs> as we learned to play their instruments ourselves. <laughs> You're like, just teach me your ways, uh, and then I can get rid of you. That's correct. Exactly. Yeah, so they're <laughs> all buried under our house. Oh, good to know. Life. So we can just, you know, send the police on over there, no big that's deal. Now, now that we know, we have oh. you on record <laughs> saying that. Yeah, they have to get a warrant. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. That is true. And the Blackbird Review, where did the name come from? So that, the name comes from a solo album that I had released uh, when I first moved to Kansas City from Pennsylvania in January of 2008 or 2007, I think, I think 2007 actually. But the album was called The Blackbird Review um, and then when Danielle and I teamed up, um, it seemed like a, a good name for a band actually. Yeah. So. 
So you kept it. Yeah. It's been working out for you so far. Yeah, so far. I love it. Um, so you did start off, you were friends, you were performing, and then you fell in love. Tell me about, you're like, well, you're like, I don't know if it was love at first sight. Was it, was it love at first sight? Was it just like, boom, fireworks? We connect on, you know, musically and emotionally. How yeah. did you guys get together? We, actually for me, it was love at first sight. I mean, like, oh, look at this guy. Look at that face. <laughs> look at that little face. Okay. Um, no, we met okay. through some mutual friends. Yeah. And I think we both were instantly interested in each other. Mm -hmm. Okay. And Jacob showed up to my senior voice recital, because I was, I was going to KU for voice at the time. Yeah. And introduced himself to all of my friends and my vocal coach and my family. <laughs> Way to go! Yeah, I was gonna I was jump like, oh, the gun real I quick. Like this guy yeah. this is very confident. And then, yeah, he asked me out on a date, and it was super awkward. Oh, almost. really? How so? I think. Well, I think because I was really nervous because I liked him. I didn't want to screw. So it you up. already had like, you were yeah you had the first date nerves then. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we were you it was, nervous or were you just like I, I got this? I was. Uh, I don't think I was super nervous, um, but it was difficult. We didn't have uh, a, our our social circles didn't really overlap very much, and um, so it was conversing was just somewhat difficult. We just didn't have a lot to talk about actually. Sure, it was weird. So you really only had a few friends in common, and that yeah. was kind of it. But music. Yes. I mean, so we that had a lot about music. That had yeah, to have been the bulk it. of what you connected over. Right. And, so. and obviously that's continued because now you've been married for almost seven years. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So yes. conversation has gotten easier. <laughs> well, obviously yes. now you know. Social circles you know are everything. overlapping more these days. <laughs> yeah. So. Of course. How um, challenging is it to work with the person that you love? And of course, I'm sure you have creative differences. How do you manage that? It is challenging, but it's really enjoyable as well. Okay. We, I think, over the years have learned to take a step back if we're, it's getting a little too heated, because I think we both like to have a certain amount of control <laughs> over ah. the songs and how they're arranged. And um, But it's really fun. I mean, you're living life and traveling and working with your best friend. So yeah. it, it, mm -hmm. it was, I think, difficult for us, but it's gotten easier and easier. So mm -hmm. it can be tough, but there's also reward. Good to know. Well, we're going to get yes. deeper into that here in a few minutes. We will be right back with Behind the Spotlight. All right, and we're back with Behind the Spotlight with the Blackbird Review. Now, you were telling me earlier about some of the rewards of being a husband and wife duo and also mm -hmm. performing and collaborating creatively. Tell me about all of the amazing things that have happened so far on your journey. Okay. Well, one, I think, exciting thing for us is that we are finally full-time musicians. It took go. a long time. That's a milestone. To get there. Yes, for sure. Um, yeah. yeah, and actually that song we played, Golden Years, uh -huh. uh, I think was born out of um, a time of, well, depression for me because I went to school for music, and that's, you know, something... I've wanted to do forever, yeah. and it just took so long to finally take that leap mm -hmm. and go full time. Um, so, what were you doing prior to? Were you guys working full time? We yes. were, mm -hmm. yes. Jacob, In unrelated fields. Yeah. Yes, unrelated. Okay. I was doing medical records actually. There you go. Yeah. Okay. Um, which you're in a basement with the door closed all the time. Oh my God. It's <laughs> no sunshine. Yeah, no. it's not great. And oh, Jacob was Hence working at- depression. <laughs> no, I, I, I believe it, yeah. yeah. Um, so. Jacob had been working at a couple different coffee shops in Kansas City. So, I mean, so. really it was just, you're waiting and waiting and waiting for this day. Right. What made you finally take that leap to go full time? Like I'm doing you music. Know, Right, I was doing medical records at a nursing home and I had just switched to a different facility and I thought it would be better, but it was oh, much worse, much worse. Oh, much no. worse. Yeah. And so I finally, I just put in my two weeks because I just couldn't handle going anymore. Mm -hmm. And during that time, in between starting another job, I started just dreaming, is it yeah. possible that I could actually just work for the band? Yeah. Um, and there was just a lot of things we had to work through, a lot of praying and just mm -hmm. trying to feel like, you know, I had that green light to actually mm -hmm. take yeah. that risk. And um, yeah, it's kind of a long story, but yeah, we ended up 
doing that. So I did it full time for about a year and then Jacob joined. So how was that for you? Were you like, okay, cool. She's, she's finally getting where she needs to be. I gotta, I gotta quickly follow in her footsteps and we both need to get to a place where, cause this is where you wanted to be. You wanted to really be able to make peace with, okay, right. buy full-time jobs. Right. I'm ready to commit to this. Yeah. For me, um, I was really glad um, when Danielle was able to do that. That was yeah. a big deal. Um, I don't think I felt immediately like I need to follow as soon okay. as I can. But I think for me it happened where circumstances, um, I sort of felt like I was just being sort of funneled in that direction. We had another yeah. uh, band member who decided he kind of wanted to do his own thing. Um, I was actually working two jobs and, and one of them kind of stopped working out. And uh, so it just felt like this is a good time to give this a shot. Yeah. And uh, so I did, and it's worked out. It has. It's worked yeah. out really well yeah. for you guys. We yeah. still eat food most of the time. <laughs> most of the time, we there do. There you go. Yeah. You're yeah. not surviving on ramen noodles totally. Right. Okay. Correct. Nothing wrong completely. with ramen, by the way. Yeah. Ate that last We've night. sort of up to easy mac at this point. So it's <laughs> the microwave. Some chef boy Those already. Those convenience yeah. like cups. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, it is going well for you. So, what are some of your? Where would you like to see you as a duo go from here? Well, we actually just started working with a booking agent, um, nice. and she does she plans national tours and some international tours. So we want to be touring a little bit more. Mm -hmm. So that's in the works mm -hmm. right now. We are working on a full length album, and it'll be our first. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Ever for the Blackbird Review. Mm -hmm. I guess that's. I think for us at this stage of our career, it's a lot about connections. Mm. Uh, yeah. So. Hooking up with the booking agent was a big deal, but I think also probably looking for management, looking for PR people, maybe down the road social media stuff as well. So that's kind of where we find ourselves now, is making those connections. Makeup and artist <laughs> and wardrobe. <laughs> right. I'm still working that on that. I get it. It's <laughs> always nice. It's Choreographer. Always nice. Right? I know you said you were going to throw in some like choreography and yeah. dance moves. Some yeah. twerking too, right? That's on the horizon. That's, that's a big part of yeah. our live yeah, shows. Yeah, we have usually. to practice that. Yeah. I can see that you've got you've got the the twerkalicious sound. <laughs> <gonna> stretch the <laughs> muscles. I wasn't sure what you were going to say there. <laughs> yeah, sound Crystal. is probably the best way to end that sound. <laughs> no, you actually have a very beautiful sort of haunting sound. In one of your songs, uh, "The Devil's Hand," mm -hmm. one of the lyrics is, uh, "You know, Papa did the best he could." Could you expand a little bit more? What inspired that song? Um. I like to, so that's a song I wrote, yeah. and I like to write story songs. Mm -hmm. Often with me, when I write a song, I have the music first, okay. and the music uh, elicits an emotion in me, and so I'll sort of channel that lyrically. So you had that melody already sort of figured yeah. out? Okay. Yeah, so that song has, um, I mean, haunting is a good way to describe yeah. it. It's uh -huh. a little bit dark, and um, so yeah, it just kind of tells the story of someone growing up. Um, with a, a pretty rough situation with their father. So yeah, I mean, the, the line that you're talking about, yeah. Papa, I guess he did the best he could. Then it says, uh, did his best to drain that flask, taught me well what not to ask, so. Was that any personal, was any no. of this? No. It's no, just... and actually, but that's one thing I like to do when I write is, is if I write, especially a story song, um, sometimes it's not my personal yeah. story, but I'm sort of inhabiting a character. But there will always be a piece of myself in there. So even if the story specifically isn't mine, there are parts of the emotion that is mine. And that's really true to things I feel. And usually there's something in that that people can relate to. Mm -hmm. And that draws them in. And right. what you're singing about is very common as well. Yeah. Um, so with the songwriting, I know that you, you have said that you kind of came a little bit later to the songwriting. Did you ever feel like when you first got together, was it, oh, he's maybe a little older, has more experience, maybe I'll let him take the lead. Was that ever a factor for you? Or did you it just decide? Was, though, it was. I think the reason why it was is more my own insecurity. Yeah. I had been writing for a while by then and um, just doing singer, songwriter stuff. And I, I had my own band. But my style of writing was so different yeah. from his. And I really respected his songwriting and I just was blown away by it and I think it made me feel like I should maybe not oh. like my songs won't work with the style sure. of the band so I just stopped for really about five 
Maybe about five years. I didn't did that write. lead to any like resentment or yes. just like? <laughs> <laughs> did. I mean, hey, I'm in a relationship. I, I, I get know, it. and it's not his fault. It was just my own. Yeah. You know, insecurities and craziness. So, and what finally made you think, okay, I can have a voice in this. I can also take the lead. I have a talent with songwriting that I can bring to the table. Was that just a natural development of your relationship over the years that slowly made you feel like I can come out and do this now? I think. It did happen naturally, yeah. and I think also going full time, I had more time and yeah, I wasn't as tired. So I started writing a lot more. I think I'd always been thinking about songs, but I never would actually follow them through uh, yeah. to completion. But um, yeah, I think just having the time and getting over those fears and insecurities and resentment, it was just I think there was a lot of healing that needed to be done. And then absolutely, mm -hmm. yeah. How d how did you heal? Was it some, was it a, a just an internal process that you know, maybe over time you've built some trust and you've mm -hmm. gotten the support that right. you needed. Was that what needed to happen? I think it was that and it was a lot of, um, I just have a lot of good friends Aww. and I think a lot of them like prayed with me. There was just a mm -hmm. lot of involving um, God and that's really how I got from That's so wonderful. the place of, you know, I depression think, to... Yeah, I, th I think... Um, us pairing back to the two piece also played a big part because it gave Danielle, I think, more presence. Yeah, mm -hmm. and more uh, ability to sort of shape the sound since it was just the right. two of us rather mm -hmm. than where we had been coming from, which had been crafted more in a folky Americana style with all those musicians. It was harder to sort of ask them to do things that that wasn't there in their wheelhouse necessarily. So right. when we became just the duo, it was easier to sort of craft a new sound. Um, right. You I feel like so. it's more authentic to who you are. Definitely. The two yeah. of us. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, I, I think my stylistic preference for performing music has always been more upbeat. Okay. Um, more on the rock side. And sure. so it was, I think, hard mm -hmm. for me to write in like an American Shiny toy guns, folk right? That was oh, one yeah. of your favorites. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I went Absolutely. through a shiny toy guns phase and I was like, oh, yeah. I yeah. love them. Yeah. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. yeah. So, and Death Cab for Cutie, and yeah. The Strokes, mm -hmm. yeah. and Phoenix, mm -hmm. so all those bands, and I think I'd always dreamed of doing something in that vein, and it just took a while to, to find your speed. Yeah. Out, get I, to I think also, okay. sometimes um, you can create something kind of new that is based out of, or, or is birthed out of your own limitations. So when mm. we, again, when we pulled back to the two-piece, um, I started playing electric guitar a lot more, but I was only really starting to play electric guitar. I didn't. I hadn't started out playing electric. I'd been playing acoustic for five years. So yeah. okay. figuring out what my sound was going to be, in addition to the sort of newer songs Kinda that Danielle was bringing, have um, each other as like a sounding board. Yeah. So it sort of became something other. different yeah. and unique to what we could do and what we had to do as the two of us. Well, I I really like what I'm hearing so far, and we're gonna have one more song from you guys. So we'll be right back in a few minutes. Stick around. And we're back here with the Blackbird Review on Behind the Spotlight. You have one last performance for us. Tell us what you're singing. The song's called Hey Danielle. Hey Danielle. Hey Can't Danielle. wait to hear it. All right. <laughs> all right. It's all you, Blackbird Review. All right. Hey Danielle. See the moon rise in your evening gown Give your voice to the wild wind See what comes back again Oh, yeah. 
sabes que 